Senator Susan Collins driving what could be the final nail in the coffin for the Democrats' resistance against Brett Kavanaugh. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will join me exclusively in moments, revealing what he said to Collins in today's lunch meeting just moments before she said yes to Kavanaugh. And amidst the Kavanaugh fight, the Me Too movement is now hitting the boardroom. But not in the way that you might think. Raymond Arroyo is here with me for Friday Follies, and you will want to stick around for Diamond and Silk. It's not Friday without Diamond and Silk. But first, the Democrats' phony victim play. That's the focus of tonight's angle. The Democrats and many on the left worked around the clock to kill Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court. But I think they made a fatal miscalculation. They thought it was okay along the way to jettison the principle of due process and to use victims to pursue a radical political agenda. And on this first year anniversary of the Me Too movement, I think it's important to remember that this all started with liberal Democrat Harvey Weinstein, friend of Bill and Hillary's, and of course, Barack Obama. Uh, and remember, he, the Hollywood mogul, big mega donor. I mean, this guy is where it all happened. And remember, the abuse there started the cultural moment of Me Too. This notion of objectifying women and using them for the pleasure of the powerful has been long nurtured by the left. At the same time, they're like, oh, we're so pro-women as we abuse women on the casting couch, etc. And the uh, entertainment industry had the target on its back. But now we see the same mentality at play in the Kavanaugh struggle. For other claims to be defenders of women, the Democrats cynically and I think cruelly use Christine Ford in a desperate attempt to derail a Supreme Court nominee. Remember, she didn't initially want to come forward to tell her story. She was dragged into the open by political leaks to the Washington Post and other media outlets. And remember, reporters surrounded her home. And then she was forced to tell her story. And today, we learned of more dirty tricks from these activist lawyers behind the scenes. Remember Leland Kaiser? She was the person who Ford claimed was at the party where Kavanaugh allegedly assaulted her, one of her close friends. Well, Kaiser previously told the Senate committee that she didn't know of such a party and didn't even know Kavanaugh to begin with. Today, though, she told the Wall Street Journal that uh, in, that in the FBI, that a former agent, another friend of Christine Ford, Monica McLean, pressured her to change her account to corroborate Ford's account. Unbelievable. Well, in a speech announcing her decision to vote for Kavanaugh's confirmation today, Senator Susan Collins perfectly summed, summed up the callousness of the Democrats. Some people who wanted to engineer the defeat of this nomination cared little, if at all, for her well-being. Professor Ford testified that a very limited number of people had access to her letter. Yet that letter found its way into the public domain. And today, Dianne Feinstein left no doubt as to what this nasty, senseless battle was really all about all along. The left's desire to use the Supreme Court to impose liberal social values on society. Another issue that gives me great pause is Judge Kavanaugh's extreme view on guns, the challenging realities women face. Roe v. Wade, what kind of medical care you can receive. Well, this has been a problem for decades. The American left believes the court should be kind of a super legislature, a body that makes law rather than interprets law. Since Trump announced his candidacy to the presidency, the left has been in perpetual rage mode. And of course, this continued into the night, and it's going to go on for some time. And this is how they attempted to influence Susan Collins before she announced her vote. Check it out. Nice. And this is how they worked their charms on Democrat Joe Manchin after he announced he was supporting Kavanaugh. 
Shame! 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 Based on, based on what you've seen, was that an assault investigation? Shame! At least it's a one-word chant. It's easy to follow. You know what's really shameful? Democrats who use victimhood as their defining principle. They'd rather have people dependent on government, helpless without it, especially certain groups, minorities, immigrants, and even women. We're supposed to believe that we can't survive and thrive without an activist court making up new rights, finding them in the Constitution, and they demand that we believe anyone who claims victim status. We have to take them at their word, regardless of where the facts lie. But for all their screaming and their tiresome chanting, the left's basically come up empty this time. Most Americans don't see themselves as victims. We're not powerless or weak. We're strong and independent. This was the Democrats' miscalculation. They thought emotional extortion and protester histrionics would be enough to block a well-qualified Supreme Court nominee. But once again, they let their rabid political ideology blind them to the fact that Americans are fair-minded, have a basic goodness about them, and they're optimistic about the future. They don't need an activist Supreme Court to see the light, to know where we are as a people, to see our future. And that's the angle. Joining me now is Code Pink's founder, co-founder, Medea Benjamin, and former Kavanaugh colleague, Helgi Walker. She also served as associate counsel to President George W. Bush and clerk for Justice Thomas on the Supreme Court. Great to have you both on. Medea, uh, do you deny that the left ended up sadly using Christine Ford as a political cudgel in this battle? No, not at all. I think her story was a important one to be heard. I think uh, so many of these women who came in from around the country, I was in Lisa Murkowski's office, I was in Senator Collins' office, they wanted to tell their stories. They wanted, it's a flooding of emotion. And I think uh, people need to hear these stories. I think it's unfortunate uh, that it doesn't look like we're so going to be able to... Fact. Uh, emotions are part of fact. Emotions... Not necessarily. Yeah, but I think in this case, uh, the opening of the possibility for women to tell their stories has been What's just... What's preventing... I, I keep, I'm sorry, but I keep hearing this. Women can't tell their stories. Women are strong, more than half the population. I think mostly more than half of law school classes today. Uh, more than half of university enrollment are women. But this idea that women are these damsels in distress and we don't have a voice and we can't... Then we you can speak any time we want. have had a, a, the fortune, good fortune, of not being molested at a young age. Uh, um, Medea, don't pull that card on me. What I'm saying is that the idea that women are damsels in distress and they need an activist Supreme Court to rescue them. And the trauma of sexual Why assault. did Christine Ford's understand. name get outed? You don't, I, I don't Why know. did her name get I outed? No, but it was outed. And she, she didn't had a want chance. it to be outed. She, she, she wa was used. She wouldn't have come to Washington. They used her. Did she look story. happy to be there, Medea? Obviously. She not. didn't want Nobody's, to be there. It's terrifying. They dragged she her said in it there. Was terrifying, they used her. Important. Let's say, Laura, can you, we agree on one thing? They it used is her. It's good that women are now coming out and telling their stories. Is that a positive thing? They used Christine Ford. I think it's a wonderful thing. They used her. And that was a sad thing to use her to they try to kill this nomination. Her. They gave her the they opportunity abused her. to tell she her did story. Not, she did not want to be there, and she made that clear in the first few minutes of her testimony. She never wanted a public hearing, and for some reason, I don't know why, she never even knew that Senator Grassley had offered that the Judiciary Committee staff could come to her in California or offered a private hearing. Did her lawyers not tell her that that was an option? What did they want, Helgi? They wanted a public spectacle and that's exactly what they got, Laura. They wanted a circus. They wanted to flood the Capitol with the victim stories. They wanted to uh, besiege senators and elevators and yell shame and spit in their faces and get a centimeter from people's faces like they're horrible people because they don't think that you should jettison due process they because didn't. because you have an agenda to kill off a, a Supreme Court nominee. Senator I Collins think it's, yeah, said I think it it's best. They, did, they did not too. care about Dr. Ford's feelings or well-being in the slightest bit. Of course they did. And they gave her an opportunity that she wanted. And they've given women in general an opportunity. And this is going to change history. It might not change who's on the Supreme Court, but it's going to change the way parents bring up their, their sons. It's going to change the way uh, young people relate to each other. It's going to change the way men act towards women. Well, um, and that's a positive This thing. is a Women's March tweet that went out today, Medea. Um, I think we have it up on the screen. 
Senator Susan Collins, rape apologist. Do you agree with that tweet? I wouldn't say she's a rape apologist. I would say she didn't listen to the women who, uh, so in such a uh, heartfelt fashion, came to tell her, please um, listen to survivors, believe women, believe Dr. Do you th Ford. So do you think all women, regardless of facts, years past, no contemporaneous corroboration, in fact, people that she claimed were in the room, Signed sworn statements saying, I wasn't there, I don't even know Kevin, including her best friend. And she so said despite she's 100% that... certain. And okay, then, so I, all I, four I, people I, in the room were lying. Another thing that has really gotten to us a lot is the way that Brent Kavanaugh acted at that hearing. Oh, and oh, I think that's important because oh, really? I don't want you a judge. You ever been in a courtroom with a judge? Court. I've been in a lot of courtrooms. Yeah, if you don't, do know, you you don't know what judge judges arrogant, are like. Arrogant, petulant, sarcastic, yeah. mean, aggressive. I mean, even Judge um, Paul Stevens, so the just, the retired Justin, if, if somebody, a lifelong somebody, Republican, if, after watching that, said... Yeah, a, lifelong, a lifelong liberal activist if judge on the bench. If somebody flat Republican. out lied about you on a national stage, would you be upset and I was going to be one of the nine people out of how many 350 million people in this country that was going to sit on the Supreme Court I would sit there and have a much more differential attitude okay so it's always, the first it was he was a rapist and he was he was a gang rapist and then he was oh he drank too much and then that didn't work and then he's like well he was aggressive with like Nasty, Cory Booker. mean Ooh. oh please I mean sarcastic yeah, a, well guess what disrespectful to the senators well, uh, 300. 300 at court opinions, overwhelming reaction by, by people on the left and right who appeared before him in 12 years on the federal bench, Medea. 12 years, not a day on the, on, the, on the Senate Judiciary Committee, but 12 years have the utmost respect for his judicial temperament, reasoning, and authority. And so then the he idea went up to the next level, which is to get on the Supreme Court, and, he's, and he failed the test. Oh, really? He's, it's called Absolutely. two words, Medea, life tenure. He's going to get confirmed tomorrow. Okay, I want to play something for you. This is uh, Susan Hennessy, and I just happened to catch this leaving my house today because I like to turn on other networks just to get some comedy, comedic relief. This is someone I've never heard of, but her name is Susan Hennessy, and it was so unhinged on a Friday night. I thought I'd play it for you, Helgi. Let's watch. Okay. The extent to which Senator Grassley relies on women to do his dirty work to actually get the job done whenever he needs votes over the line just speaks to how unbelievably tone deaf Ugh. these individuals are. I do think that it, it touches into the same sort of incandescent rage that we are seeing mm -hmm. in response to the Kavanaugh uh, confirmation. That's a big phrase, incandescent rage. Ooh, okay, you got that. And Grassley's relying on women to do his dirty work. So what, what does she, that mean? What does she we should say? exclude women from the vote? Susan Collins is controlled by Chuck Grassley. Susan Collins stood up and gave an incredible speech in the tradition of Senator Margaret Chase Smith. She spoke to reason. She spoke to fact. She gave a very principled explanation. An hour. And thank, thank goodness, Laura, somebody broke through this morass and brought some common sense and some decency and maybe reset this process to something near normal. Real quick, well, yeah. here we see the difference because I thought Murkowski's speech was very heartfelt, Collins. very deep, and very uh, good. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Murkowski said, she lost me when she said, our role of advice and consent. It's advise and consent. I'm sorry, if you're a U.S. senator and you don't know it's advise and consent, she's, sorry, you already lost me. The heart. But Medea, you're like emotion and heart. I'm not saying it's not important. We all love good emotion. We love a good cry. We love a good laugh. But at some point, facts and reason have to win out. I mean, in life, they ultimately win out, do they not? And there was a doubt about whether yeah. he did this, and so he should not be on the Supreme Court. Period. I hope not. You never are subjected to this an was accusation a job interview that and he destroyed failed you. it. He actually didn't fail it because he's going to be confirmed well, on the Supreme Court. It. Okay, well that's a different <laughs> that's a different way of scoring it. Uh, ladies, thank you very much for being here tonight, both of you. Medea and I go way back from the early 2000s on radio. It's great to see you. And it's no secret at this point that the grassroots protesters at the Capitol are often funded either directly or indirectly, by some George Soros-affiliated groups. Now, we've shown you the evidence of that, but for daring to raise this possibility, Senator Chuck Grassley was called an anti-Semite. A New York Times op-ed writer, David Leonard, writes, let's be clear here, Charles Grassley is a United States senator. He's responsible for his words, and his words are, are here amount to an anti-Semitic smear. Michelle Malkin joins us now with reaction to that craziness and how it's uh, this, this crazy kind of sometimes mob mentality seems to be taking over politics. 
and certainly Capitol Hill. Uh, Michelle, did George Soros have any involvement in the funding of like this, what is it, the Center for Popular Democracy, where they, the ladies cornered poor old Jeff Flake in the elevator the other day, and he looked very scared. Yeah. Were they involved in yeah. that? Yeah, the Center for Popular Democracy is uh, aligned with George Soros's entire network, and he is the the son uh, in the center of a, a galaxy of these left wing resistance groups that have morphed over time. Whether it was Move On or your previous guest, Medea. Benjamin's Code Pink. Now there's a, a new generation of these groups, and, and CPD is one of them, along with Code Pink 2.0, Ultraviolet. And it is the protest orchestration, I think, that really needs to be among the funders and the philanthropists that back these professional mobsters, but also the people that they were coordinating with within the Senate Judiciary Committee. It's still not as answered. Who gave the Senate gallery passes to people like Linda Sarsour uh, and Piper Parabo and these others who from day one, second one, minute one of the hearings were enacting that they have announced ever since uh, uh, Donald Trump won from day one, second one, minute one of the hearings were enacting that they have announced ever since uh, uh, Donald Trump won office. Um, and I think that the Senate Democrat wrecking machine is not going to give up. Kavanaugh is uh, nominated and approved tomorrow. They're going to go on all the way through the midterms and 2020. And I think it behooves the right and the conservative movement, Laura, to make sure that we don't leave a vacuum in these spaces. Yeah, well, Michelle, you took the words out of my mouth because you really have to hand it to the left's power to organize. I really give it to them because they sh they bust people here. They put them up at you know local churches. They all like print out the same glossy posters, Kavanaugh. That was actually kind of clever, I have to admit. Uh, but they, you know, they, they, <laughs> they get their word out. I mean, and they really did, I think, ultimately delay this vote for a week. They were ultimately not successful, but they dragged this thing out for another week. And look, until the, the last vote is cast, I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed. Anything can always happen. Same. Uh, yeah, yep. everyone needs a taste tester tonight, don't you think, Michelle? Like everybody should have their food <laughs> tasted. Uh, but yes, they did. They did have an effect, and they are cowing some of these uh, more moderate senators. So they they ultimately voted for, or they will vote for Kavanaugh. Yeah, you know that we we do need boots on the ground. There are millions of us women, for example, Laura, who feel the same way we do, and you voiced it well in that previous segment, who rely on facts and logic, and who believe, as I do, that we need to believe evidence, not gender, as the default. And you know, it is hard for these elected officials when they've got screaming, baying mobs of these feminist hounds, and nobody on the other side to counter them. And I. I always hear, of course, from a lot of small business owners and parents and, and family members on the right, well, we have full-time jobs, so we can't be right. there. And obviously, on Election Day, they will have a, a voice and, and a vote. But, you know, maybe it's time we pay full-time people to, to, to answer, answer that and make sure that we are represented on the ground in the Beltway, because it's not going to stop. All right. There are a lot of conservative businessmen making a ton of money in this economy, this Trump economy. They got to pony up money. Yes. I mean, the Democrats are doing it. Steyer's doing it, registering hundreds of thousands of people to vote, including young people, uh, Puerto Rican voters moving to Florida. That's a big deal. And you yes. know, it's, it can't be all on you, Michelle, to, to pull us yes. over the finish line, hey. all right? <laughs> and I want to say one more part of the plan, which is I, I heard that you're going to uh, move to Alaska and run for Senate against Murkowski. I'm going to move to Hawaii and run against that crazy Maisie Hirono. <laughs> right. That would be fun. Although I'd rather be in Alaska than Hawaii. You want to trade? Uh, no, I, I, I'll do the fly fishing. <laughs> you can do the surfing down there, uh, Michelle. Yeah, right. Uh, all right, Michelle, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Historic you night bet. here in Washington, D.C. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is here next exclusively with us. His reaction to today's events and a look ahead to tomorrow's historic Kavanaugh vote. So stay right there. As those who have known him best have attested, he has been an exemplary public servant, judge, teacher, coach, husband, 
and father. Mr. President, I will vote to confirm Judge Kavanaugh. That was Senator Susan Collins delivering a crushing blow to Democrats, hoping for a last-minute defection. During her nearly one-hour-long speech earlier today, she echoed many of the sentiments offered on the Senate floor day after day by our next guest. We're happy to be joined exclusively tonight by Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Senator McConnell, when did you know you had the votes? <laughs> when, the, when the roll was called. <laughs> no, really? You didn't? Yeah, they, they were all uh, very guarded about, uh, about making an announcement. So this is one of those rare situations when you go into a vote not really knowing for sure you had, had them. Because you usually call cloture, you, you don't usually call cloture unless you know you have the ultimate votes, well, we, correct? We had to move on this. I mean, this, this was not going to get any better if we didn't vote. I decided a week ago we were going to vote on Friday because we, we watched what was happening. They were trying to destroy this good man with all these rumors and all the rest of the stuff. So it need, we needed to have the vote in order to bring it to, to a conclusion. Why didn't Senator Mikowski ultimately go along? Uh, we got Flake and you got Collins with that long speech today. She, I mean, she really impressed a lot of people with her passion and her dedication to advising consent. What happened to Murkowski? Well, you know, I'd rather celebrate the victory. And I think there's plenty of credit to go around President Trump for making great choices. And Chairman Grassley for doing a heck of a good job in committee dealing with all these outbursts. Uh, my members dealing with, uh, I mean, we've been under assault, Laura. They're, our homes have been, uh, uh, they've come to our homes. Yours was today, this morning. Yeah, but not, not just me, everybody. I mean, they, they've been after all of us. We've, we've sort of been under assault. And everybody decided to stand up to the mob, you know, to not, to not be intimidated by these people. I just couldn't be prouder of my members for refusing to roll over under all of this intense uh, pressure, all these lies. Um, this is a great day for America. The Senate is under siege. The protesters don't seem to be letting up, even uh, late in the afternoon into the evening uh, tonight. Uh, is this the new normal? And I want to play something. This is Sen Senator Manchin. This was after the Collins uh, uh, speech today mm -hmm. and after he said he would vote for Brett Kavanaugh. Let's watch. Look at us! 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 Look at the way it's going to be? I mean, is there going to be any changes to building access? You don't want to become cocoon, but any changes to, to how you let people into the building? Well, I think security will take care of that. Look, I, I think the main point is that the mob was not able to intimidate the Senate. We stood up to the mob. We did the right thing for a good man. I filled a lifetime appointment on the Supreme Court. There's a lot to celebrate today. I couldn't be prouder of all of my members. Senator Collins was outstanding. You had part of her speech in the, uh, in, in the entry. But the Democrats now have raised, just during her speech, they raised almost $2 million on a GoFundMe page for an undetermined candidate. And Susan Collins is apparently seriously entertaining, Susan Rice, excuse me, entertaining a challenge against Senator Collins in 2020. Your thoughts? Uh, Senator Collins will be well-funded, I can assure you. That, look, there's a lot of enthusiasm on our side, too. You may or may not have noticed the rising enthusiasm among Republican voters. I think our people are going to be just as fired up as theirs a month from now, and everybody's going to remember what they did to Brett Kavanaugh. Is this the shot in the arm that the Republicans needed? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is an, it, it's, it's a, it's a wake-up call to why it's important to hold the Senate. You know, the Senate's in the personnel business. I love the House, but the Senate's in the personnel business. If you want to get judges confirmed, cabinet members confirmed, boards and commissions confirmed, we have to control the Senate so the president's nominations can actually be confirmed and take the jobs. Do you intend to use this issue on the campaign trail for the last four weeks, and what are you going to say about it? Absolutely. I'm going to remind everybody of the importance of the Senate. For two Supreme Court appointments, 26 circuit judges, a record for the first two years. These are lifetime appointments with conservative men and women who believe that the job of the judge is to interpret the law as it's written. Well, what, what about um, repercussions for what happened during this process? I have. I was here for Judge Bork. I was young uh, speechwriter in the Reagan administration. I was here for Justice Thomas, obviously. But I think this actually rivaled.
both of those. I it was too. brutal. And Lindsey Graham was on with us last night, and he talked about the need for repercussions against the wrongdoers in this case. Let's watch. I believe uh, Diane Feinstein didn't leak it, but I don't know about her staff. I do know this. Her staff recommended to Dr. Ford Miss Katz, who hates Trump, as a politically active leftist lawyer. But why not get the, the e secure their emails and texts, we're going leaking after, confidential we're going, information? Uh, You're going to do that tonight? Here's what I'm going to do. Anybody who did this is going to pay a price. Will they pay a price? I think it will be investigated, but, you know, it didn't work. I think the most important thing to note here is these tactics did not. But you don't work. want to go through this again. You want to pay. Well, people need to pay. What for I want these people document. to know, Laura, is we're prepared to go through it again. They're not going to intimidate us. They're not going to tell us how to vote, and they've actually, you know, they actually helped us win this vote. Their tactics actually helped us unify our people and win this vote. They're going to help us win a month from now on November sixth, too. Uh, do you think you'll pick up Senate seats? And I hope so, so. Which one? I hope so. This this underscores how important it is. I mean, we have a close margin, a very close margin. I'd like to have a few extra Republican senators. Let's talk about the media's role in all of this, <laughs> amplifying charges. We had uh, another point I want to play from Susan Collins when she talked about the rape rooms and the, these words that were being thrown around against this esteemed judge. Let's watch. The allegation that when he was a teenager, Judge Kavanaugh drugged multiple girls and used their weakened state to facilitate gang rape. This outlandish allegation was put forth without any credible supporting evidence and simply parroted public statements of others. Including the media, a celebrity yeah. porn lawyer. I mean, I can remember when that sort of thing was not put on the air. I mean, people didn't just peddle uh, nonsense with no corroboration. That really exacerbated the problem. And a lot of the Senate Democrats, of course, would mainstream that stuff right into their discussions and try to convince everybody that it somehow happened. No corroboration at all. Just rumors all over the place. Senator Merkley from Oregon was quite upset today. He said this. Chuck Grassley, the chair of the committee, and Mitch McConnell, the majority leader. They said there's no contemporaneous evidence to support the women who came forward. That is not true. What are we missing here, Senator? I don't know what he's talking about. <clears throat> the, um, there, there was no evidence to corroborate any of the allegations against uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, he, maybe he's on a different planet. I'm not sure. Right now, when you look back on these last you know, couple of weeks, and you've had an incredible run of confirming circuit court judges and district court judges, but just this experience, lessons learned for the Republican Party, the Senate, maybe uh, the president going forward. Well, I think we reaffirmed that in this country, you're presumed innocent. The presumption is in favor of innocence. We also relearned that you, can't, you should not allow mobs to intimidate you. And I think it's a good lesson for us. I think it unified our conference, made us excited about the November election. It was good for the American people to see that these people were stood up to and they didn't get away with it. They did not win. That's the most important thing. How radical has the Democratic Party of today become? It's a pretty wild bunch. I mean, it's pretty clear they were willing to do anything, say anything, to try to win. You no still, boundaries. You still have close friends in the Democratic caucus after all this, or motion's pretty raw? I think we'll get past it in terms of relationships, but um, it was a tough period, a tough period. I hope they learned a lesson. That you, can, you can do this kind of thing, but it doesn't necessarily get you to victory. Mitch McConnell, congratulations. Thank you, Laura. Thanks so much for being here. All right, ahead, Friday Follies with Raymond Arroyo. And the first story is connected to you, Senator McConnell. Anti-Kavanaugh protesters hold an impromptu kegger in front of your house this morning. That and a whole lot more on that important, very important night tonight, the history of our country. Stay. Friday, I'm sorry. It's Friday, which means it's time for...
Oh, it's Friday Follies, where protesters get creative outside Mitch McConnell's house, and sexual politics are taking over boardrooms and classrooms. For all the details, we're joined by Raymond Arroyo, Fox News contributor, comedian during breaks, and New York Times bestselling author of the Will Wilder series. Uh, Raymond, tell me about the early morning protests outside of McConnell's townhouse. Imagine it's 7.30 in the morning, and you're awakened by a protest coming up the block. You can imagine Mitch McConnell, Elaine, what is that out there? <laughs> and then he saw this, watch. Now, they're, <laughs> they were walking up the block saying, chug, 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 I like beer. This is like walking into the Pirates of the Caribbean in Old Town. I mean, the poor man is surrounded by these drunken protesters, ribbon beer. Red, blue ribbon. Uh, blue You're a ribbon big beer drinker, drinker yeah, I don't touch this stuff. Yes, it's not and, a Sazerac. Arroyo doesn't that's right. drink it. And they have the red solo cups. And they're saying, I like beer, I like beer. Now, remember, Brett Kavanaugh, at his hearings, did mention this. Mm. We drank beer, uh, my friends and I, the boys and girls. Yes, we drank beer. I like beer. Still like beer. We drank beer. We like beer. You see, my question is, I don't know what this protest is about. Because if you don't like the guy, why are you mimicking his words? Uh, or do you support him or not? I mean, it seemed like any random morning on Frat Row at Dartmouth. I mean, this is what we were doing. And I mean, it didn't look like much of a protest. It looked more like a collection of disgruntled neighbors just wanting to wake yeah, Mitch they, McConnell up. Yeah, they had like a zoning grievance yeah. with Mitch McConnell. Now, Laura, this was a creative protest compared to what was going on in the bowels of the Capitol, okay? This is an organizer giving his marchers orders, marchers. but uh, are they in kindergarten? You be the judge. Summon to vote. Yeah, summon to vote. Let's go watch the vote. Let's go watch the vote. In offices that you wish to communicate with. In offices that you wish to communicate with. I am going to go to Heidi Heitkamp's office. I am going to go to Heidi Heitkamp's office. Why? She's on our side. And you wait, can go to side. the offices you go wait, to. Wait, wait, wait. They were going to the wrong office. Right. Weren't they going to Heidi Heidkamp? Like, yes. wait, zombie. Is it co zombie? <laughs> She's on our side. Oh, totally, totally my bad. But why do you have to have a chant and, and echo for basic orders we're like going. we're going to go to the offices? We're going. We're, we're going, going to the offices. To to the offices, the, <laughs> the offices. offices. Okay, right. the Me Too movement is getting a pretty big birthday present. In California, the governor signed a bill requiring public corporations to, in his state, to have at least one female director on their boards. By 2021, every board will have to have three female Yay. directors. Do you think this is even constitutional, Laura? Well, I think Pacific Islanders, uh, Latino Americans, <laughs> and every other uh, group should say, what about me? How about me men? Too. I just want men to be on the all-female boards. Then there might be parity. What all-female boards? There are no all-female well, boards. Let me tell you about this selfie yeah. suicide uh, movement that's happening. Yeah. Uh, the Indian Real Health quick. Services did a study. 259 people in seven years l lost their lives taking these risky selfie shots, um, mostly men people between 10 and 29, but that number is really low. They're saying it's almost 250. It's much higher than that. The, the, all they did was look at publicly declared yeah. cases. There are a lot that went undeclared, but it's people on rooftops, on monuments, they're, they're in traffic, and they're dying taking these shots. Narcissism. It's real vanity. Okay, before I go, uh oh, I thought just to, just to bring it all together, Laura, I like the whole beer. segment. Oh, we'll we'll take a open. selfie. Oh. Here, you take that one. It's open. open. It and I'll hand. take a quick selfie. You ready? All right, ready? Okay. Okay. Right. Smile. Do we have it? Wait, yeah. uh, oh, no. the go, angle. Go to the edge. Wait, wait, the angle. Go to the edge. Oh, oh. oh. The ACLU used to care about the rights of accused, but with Kavanaugh, well, they spent a million bucks comparing him to uh, Bill Cosby. I Check on him, please. Medic, uh, former VP of the group, is here to take his former group to task. Help him. Joining meeting. <coughs> As those who have known him best have attested, he has been an exemplary public servant, judge, teacher, coach, husband, and father. Mr. President, I will vote to confirm 
Judge Kavanaugh. That was Senator Susan Collins delivering a crushing blow to Democrats, hoping for a last-minute defection. During her nearly one-hour-long speech earlier today, she echoed many of the sentiments offered on the Senate floor day after day by our next guest. We're happy to be joined exclusively tonight by Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Senator McConnell, when did you know you had the votes? <laughs> when, the, when the roll was called. <laughs> no, really? You didn't? Yeah, they, they were all uh, very guarded about, uh, about making an announcement. So this is one of those rare situations when you go into a vote not really knowing for sure that you had, had them. Because you usually call cloture, you, you don't usually call cloture unless you know you have the ultimate votes, well, we, correct? We had to move on this. I mean, this, this was not going to get any better if we didn't vote. I decided a week ago we were going to vote on Friday because we, we watched what was happening. They were trying to destroy this good man with all these rumors and all the rest of the stuff. So it need, we needed to have the vote in order to bring it to, to a conclusion. Why didn't Senator Mikowski ultimately go along? Uh, we got Flake and you got Collins with that long speech today. She, I mean, she really impressed a lot of people with her passion and her dedication to advise and consent. What happened to Murkowski? Well, you know, I'd rather celebrate the victory. And I think there's plenty of credit to go around President Trump for making great choices. And Chairman Grassley for doing a heck of a good job in committee dealing with all these outbursts. Uh, my members dealing with, uh, I mean, we've been under assault, Laura. They're, our homes have been, uh, uh, they've come to our homes. Yours was today, this morning. Yeah, but not, not just me, everybody. I mean, they, they've been after all of us. We've, we've sort of been under assault. And everybody decided to stand up to the mob, you know, to not, to not be intimidated by these people. I just couldn't be prouder of my members for refusing to roll over under all of this intense uh, pressure and all these lies. Um, this is a great day for America. The Senate is under siege. The protesters don't seem to be letting up, even uh, late in the afternoon into the evening uh, tonight. Uh, is this the new normal? And I want to play something. This is Sen Senator Manchin. This was after the Collins uh, uh, speech today mm -hmm. and after he said he would vote for Brett Kavanaugh. Let's watch. Look at us! 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 Look A lot of my radio callers today said, is this the way it's going to be? I mean, is there going to be any changes to building access? You don't want to become cocoon, but any changes to, to how you let people into the building? Well, I think security will take care of that. Look, I, I think the main point is that the mob was not able to intimidate the Senate. We stood up to the mob. We did the right thing for a good man. I filled a lifetime appointment on the Supreme Court. There's a lot to celebrate today. I couldn't be prouder of all of my members. Senator Collins was outstanding. You had part of her speech in the, uh, in, in the entry. But the Democrats now have raised, just during her speech, they raised almost $2 million on a GoFundMe page for an undetermined candidate. And Susan Collins is apparently seriously entertaining, Susan Rice, excuse me, entertaining a challenge against Senator Collins in 2020. Your uh, thoughts? Senator Collins would be well-funded, I can assure you. Yeah, look, there's a lot of enthusiasm on our side, too. You may or may not have noticed the rising enthusiasm among Republican voters. I think our people are going to be just as fired up as theirs a month from now, and everybody's going to remember what they did to Brett Kavanaugh. Is this the shot in the arm that the Republicans needed? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is an, it, it's, it's a, it's a wake-up call to why it's important to hold the Senate. You know, the Senate's in the personnel business. I love the House, but the Senate's in the personnel business. If you want to get judges confirmed, cabinet members confirmed, boards and commissions confirmed, we have to control the Senate so the president's nominations can actually be confirmed and take the jobs. Do you intend to use this issue on the campaign trail for the last four weeks, and what are you going to say about it? Absolutely. I'm going to remind everybody of the importance of the Senate. For two Supreme Court appointments, 26 circuit judges, a record for the first two years. These are lifetime appointments with conservative men and women who believe that the job of the judge is to interpret the law as it's written. Well, what, what about um, repercussions for what happened during this process? This, I, have, I was here for Judge Bork. I was a young uh, speechwriter in the Reagan administration. I was here for Justice Thomas, obviously. But I think it, this actually rivaled both of those. It was too. brutal. 
And Lindsey Graham was on with us last night, and he talked about the need for repercussions against the wrongdoers in this case. Let's watch. I believe uh, Diane Feinstein didn't leak it, but I don't know about her staff. I do know this. Her staff recommended to Dr. Ford Miss Katz, who hates Trump, is a politically active leftist lawyer. But why not get the, the e secure their emails and texts, We're going leaking after, confidential we're going, information? You're going to do that tonight? Here's what I'm going to do. Anybody who did this is going to pay a price. Will they pay a price? I think it'll be investigated, but, you know, it didn't work. I think the most important thing to note here is these tactics did not. But you don't work. want to go through this again. You want to pay. Well, people need to pay. What for I want these people document. to know, Laura, is we're prepared to go through it again. They're not going to intimidate us. They're not going to tell us how to vote, and they've actually, you know, they actually helped us win this vote. Their tactics actually helped us unify our people and win this vote. They're going to help us win a month from now on November sixth too. Uh, do you think you'll pick up Senate seats? And I hope so. so. Which one? I hope so. This this underscores how important it is. I mean. We